So good morning all of you. No good morning at all. I think you're all tired after your Diwali vacation. Uh, today we'll start with our last C. So these are the last set of three lectures, uh, which is the connection. And uh, uh, we will show you a live case study. In fact, I was part of that live case study while I was working at Larsen and Tubro. Uh, uh, you will get a clear idea of how one discipline or one situation or one professional cannot get innovation going on. It has to be a collaborative effort. It has to be a culmination of all the strengths of every discipline for innovation to happen. So these are those you know, important series uh, for you to understand the innovation process. So we are very clear that you know, finally innovation is said to have been happened only if the user gets the benefit and a large number of users are really you know sort of happy with the type of product which has been designed and it solves their problem so the last you know uh, uh, c which is the concern uh, uh, of uh, connection becomes very very important in this product so what is connecting with the user back that is you done a design you did mass production you gave it back to the users and then the user said wow this is great and you get into you know large scale implementation and there is great user satisfaction and delight so you need innovation to happen you need to have great user satisfaction and delight. So, so we can't use innovation against everything like innovative research. No, innovation is said to happen only when there is user satisfaction and delight. So that becomes extremely critical in our journey. So all of you at least remember that after our class on you know, the design, innovation by design, we should not be in that confusion that we'll call everything innovation. It could be a creative idea or it could be a you know, uh, cutting edge research, but it can't be innovative research till it has not reached the people for whom the work can be beneficial. So I'm going to show you this you know, wonderful uh, case study you know, of Larsen and Tubro. They call themselves Imagineering, that is engineering and imagination. So they're one of the best companies. I'm very, very fortunate that I worked for Larsen and Tubro after my initial uh, study at IIT, uh, after I graduated Master of Design. At uh, IDC, they came for campus placement. So I, through the campus placement, I joined the company. And this story is one designer, 500 other people in the company. How each one was given their, you know, uh, uh, given their importance, and then how innovation could come up. So now we talk about serial innovation in petrol pumps. So that's it. So from that LNT situation, we kept on doing same product, same process of innovation across different timelines. So what happens first 10 years in the petrol pump? Then the next 10 years, if you come up with a new design, what are the changes which will happen? Next five years, if you come up with another product, same product, can you be innovative? Can you reach the people? Can you reach the, their aspirations? So that is the you know, focus of this you know, series of three lectures, which will go one by one. So these are the three products which you see. The first one was the Z-Line petrol pump for Larsen and Tubro. Again, you know, a runaway success at every level of uh, the company, the users, the context, for the company it made a lot of profit, for the designer it gave a lot of, you know, sort of um, uh, like uh, uh, popularity and, uh, you know, uh, standing, uh, uh, as well as for the user, the oil company's huge amount of business. Then within, you know, another seven to eight years, in fact, it was nine years, we did the bullet dispenser for another company and again it was phenomenally accepted by the people. Then we had the oval pumps in 2004 which again was you know cutting edge and it was you know implemented at a you know prototype and pilot production level. So I will show you these journey one by one but let us now focus on our LNT Z line. What happened there? What are the three core or four core pivots which worked over there? The first pivot was user focus. And did I tell you earlier that users have different levels? There's one user who is the end user who is coming and filling petrol. The other user is a person who is actually giving you petrol, filling petrol for you. The, the, the you know, territory users are the users who are manufacturing the pumps, who are installing the pumps, who are distributing the pumps. So the primary user, the secondary user who is the maintenance guy and the person who is installing, all these levels of users are very, very important in the innovation cycle. So these, you know, uh, so when we say user focus, it is multiple levels of users, not just one person who is the end person who is using it. So for example, if you're doing your project for the elderly, you need to look at who's going to manufacture your product. Otherwise, it will never reach innovation. 
So can you bring him very early into the design phase and say, oh, I'll make it convenient for you to manufacture? Or who is going to deploy it? Are you going to use NGOs to deploy your you know, elderly products? If you're going to use NGOs, you have to keep your costs very low. Or if you're going to large companies which manufacture for elderly, you will have a different thing. So those focuses are very important. And then very interesting and very important aspect is technology and materials. A number of times companies use old technology and old materials because it's very tough to use new technology. Because you're not sure whether it'll work well. New manufacturing, you're not sure whether it'll work well. So that is one hallmark for innovation is you'd use contemporary or futuristic materials and technology. Then the you know core, which is the creative ideation at different levels. Ideation and creativity, you know, extremely critical. And then the collaborative teaming. Across the collaboration teams, you have to work and get things going. So now let us come to the problem. The problem given you know, to us was, when I joined the company, in fact, they had focused and had come to IDC saying that, oh, we are completely losing business. We have a serious problem in hand. No orders from the companies. The companies are the oil companies like Indian Oil, Bath Petroleum and all. They are not been giving orders to LNT at all because LNT's products were expensive and was not having any big advantage over the competitors. So they realized that our products are not looking good. The realization was aesthetic. So let us go to IDC and hire a designer who can make the pump look beautiful because LNT always thought that they were great in engineering. They were great in manufacturing. So they were only lacking, you know, uh, design or user friendly products. So they came and they sort of hired me. And then when I went into the company, I realized that's just not aesthetics and uh, user, user requirement. There's much, much more to innovation. And I will, you know, request all of you to make note down those points while the presentation is going on. So very clear of the challenges and the key aspects where innovation can happen, you know, across the domains. So then what, uh, you know, the context was that LNT was manufacturing an electronic petrol pump. This is way back in 1988. So you, I will want you to, you know, go back there, you know, in 1988 when we had only Maruti cars on the roads small Maruti cars and actually Maruti car was just launched when we launched our pedal pump before it was only ambassador cars is that type of era and I will show you the journey how we went forward and the focus was that we need to design an electronic petrol pump earlier what type of petrol pumps used to be there mechanical petrol pumps with those meters and I'll show you some of them in the next slides then what was the first thing which struck me when I went to LNT it is a size it is the size, it is the financial muscle, and if it, it's the brand of the company. So Larson and Tubro was big. It had you know, various divisions ranging from defense to chemical to powder metallurgy to you know, uh, like pressure vessels. And you name it, they were there in all fields, uh, including construction, electronics, switchgear products. So if such a large company looks at design, what should be your design focus? What will be your design focus when you design for a large company? What will be your design focus when you design for a small company? These are the questions I am asking you. Keep that in mind and you know, you'll get your answers while we go ahead. Look at this section of LNT, which was the you know, bottom most right side part, which actually was looking at large power plants. Look at those huge sheds. So we had very huge uh, financial strength the company was financially very very stable so you could you know uh, get the world product invest heavily and come up with a competitive product for the market you had excellent manpower the right type of manpower so you can just imagine that as soon as they realized that they needed a new look pump they came to IDC so they're very very clear that they they have to have the right manpower for the right you know work and then this is our division, uh, petrol pumps came under switchgear division and this is the switchgear division's R&D quarters in gate number 7 while going to, you know, uh, uh, Andheri, you get this on the left hand side because you are in Powai. But now, you know, they have moved uh, this building uh, uh, out of the city. Uh, so this particular, uh, you know, division was our R&D and we used to have different departments very well organized and very well oiled. What happens in large companies like Lars and Tubro? They have very efficient product development and very efficient manufacturing and very efficient sales and marketing. All the models are there. When you do design, innovation by design, you have to look at the creative ideation part, which was missing. You have to look at completely 
out of the box product which was missing and you know all the rules fell on me when I joined the company. So they were having a large market share, so they lost out on the market share. So we clearly you know came up with a product brief of what happens. In fact, I was pretty shocked when the you know uh, uh, R&D head called me. You know, within a week after joining, it said you know I was also you know very uh, sort of uh, uh, you know uh, overwhelmed by the company, the size of the company, and the size of the department. My department R&D itself was 400 people strong at different levels, and I was the only designer in the company from the industrial design point of view. So, on top of it, the you know, R&D head came and said that you need to reduce the cost of the product by 25 percent. So that, that was the main requirement they came up with. So we'll you know discuss how cost can be reduced. Then you know the product should at least last for five to six years in the market as a champion product. And the form and aesthetics of the product had to be strikingly different and you know new in the field because they were already out of business. And co competitors had, you know, already have, you know, had great products, so they need to do that. And then they said, don't change the hydraulics because hydraulics is already ready. And if you change that, it will take a longer time cycle. If you change a lot of things, your product life cycle will go up. So they said, don't change the uh, hydraulics, and use existing manufacturing facilities of Lasser and Tubro. I'll come down to this point. Using existing manufacturing facilities, do you think we can uh, do innovation? We can, but we'll check out their pros and cons, their trade-offs. Use new manufacturing techniques, something else will happen. You use current manufacturing techniques, you get advantage of cost. We will come to those points later on. And construction had to be made in sheet metal because that was the strength they had in the manufacturing. And what was LNT? It was huge. You know, it was started by two Danish uh, the, you know, engineers, and you know, they were uh, the company's turnover was 100,000 crores. And you know, you know, it became one of the largest. You know, if you look at the company, you know, had 13 is today having 39 registered offices, 22 countries, and all over the world, the brand value is you know top 10. And like you know, if you look at the turnover, uh, what's the turnover? It's 100,000 crores nearly. So, if, and if that type of company, and is, you know, all the responsibility comes onto your shoulder, you see what happened in the in the earlier times. So this one, before I joined, there was a designer who was my senior from IDC, again an excellent designer, he is now back to IDC uh, as a visiting faculty, Peer Satik, and he had come up with a very, very contemporary design. Out of the box, round petal pump, very convenient, very easy to access the nozzle, you know, uh, and uh, you know, but the company was not ready for it. Company was big, but they were not ready for it because they did not have the manufacturing capacity to manufacture composites or glass reinforced panels. See how even one, one aspect of innovation or one aspect of manufacturing is not considered, your product cannot come out in the market. Look at the product, how beautiful it is and how innovative and how out of the box it is. So this is the type of structure it was using. And then what happened in our pitfalls for the innovation process? The first pitfall itself, the company did not take it forward. Now, if you look at the pitfalls, what is interesting is there was nobody in the design section, in the mock up section, the first one which you saw. Whereas all other sections of uh, you know prototype making, pilot production, and mass production, LNT was phenomenally good. So, there was a big advantage for me, right? You could start and come up with a great product idea, and it will sail through all those stages. In the earlier cases in IIT, what used to happen if I did a design, I had to work very hard to take the process to the mass manufacturing. But here, I am sitting in a one of the best companies in the world who have all the other process but are missing the design process. So, so whereas the earlier designer had done a product, so they learned from that mistake and they gave me very, very stringent brief saying that do not change this, do not change this, use the manufacturing facilities and manufacturing synergy of the company to take it forward. So, that is the first you know uh, aspect. So, that product you know went back. So, I came in, then I did some interesting work. I said, let me look at what happened with the history of pumps. Because here user is the focus. What, what is the biggest pain for users? Tell me when you fill petrol, what is the biggest pain? From you guys, quickly. Huh? Beg your pardon? What are the, when you go and fill petrol, huh? You have to turn back and see 40. 
You can you have to turn back and look at the display. That's one problem. You can't even see the display properly. What's the other biggest pain? You've got like the pipe is not enough, so you have to shift the car over. To you may have to go back and forth to you know adjust to the pipe length. But what's the bigger user in interaction issue? Bigger user interaction. Can you guess? Perception point of view. Anyway, we'll go and look at the history to you know find out what it is. Look at this earlier years. So in the year 1924, how were they filling petrol? By cranking. And there was a display, a dial. And look at the person's dress and look at the cars. The material, manufacturing, scenario, system. So system, what is your current system design becomes very, very critical. Look at the next, 1933. There was a little better, you know, uh, hydraulics, so your pumps became taller. Your cars, you know, you can see that they are much more, you know, advanced. They are better manufactured. And then you can see, you know, how the, you know, uh, display, the, the pumping is not happening through cranking anymore. Okay. And in 1937, you still have displays, better pumping. You have, you know, uh, like sheet metal coming in a big way. The pumps also are changing. And in 1954, again, you can see the cars are all deep drawn, manufacturing is happening, people have changed, the pump also is different, it's come up with some displays which are register based displays. But what was the, you know, uh, there's one missing over here, which is in the middle, which is in 1940, there was a pump like this. Can you see the glass jar on the top? There's a glass jar on the top and there is a crank over here. So you crank the petrol and you fill the glass jar. And then you empty the glass jar in your car. So what do you get in this? What do you learn from this? You get tremendous amount of user satisfaction that this one liter of petrol, which was in the glass jar, got emptied in my car. That type of confidence we are not able to give even in this modern context, in our great pumps today. The confidence that I am getting, correct measure of petrol. So how can we generate this confidence among users, end users, that you are getting correct measure of petrol? We will we'll come down to those answers a little later. Okay. So as I told you, today innovation has, if it has to happen, it has to be across all the segments in the product. You have to have, you know, technology which should be contemporary and, you know, futuristic. You must have excellent user interfaces. Your manufacturing has to be phenomenally good. You would have very good management systems in place. So luckily for LNT, what was the advantage? Other than user interface, low cost, and looking at aesthetics, all other things were in very good shape. We just had to make, you know, uh, incremental changes in the other sections to make them, you know, uh, come into the innovation flower. And we, I call this the sunflower model of innovation because if you take care of all aspects of the petal, the petal will look towards the sun and that is looking towards the user and your, you know, you have innovation in your hand. So what happens with the user study? So I was taught in IDC that you go and fill petrol yourself. Stay in the stations, learn from the operators, learn from the display people, learn from all the aspects, you know, of the, you know, the uh, uh, level of people who are, you know, working with the pump. So after all that study, very, very good insights came like, you know, Malishu was talking about, you know, the, so much of problem with the display, so much of problem with the length of the hose, so much of problem with the user getting tired in half the shift because he used to leave the heavy hose. So all that we studied, the user, the end user the the uh, secondary user secondary user is the station owners the you know the the operators and all those people and we studied the tertiary users who are at the manufacturing plant so within the company we looked at the manufacturing we looked at the vendors and found out what problems they are facing everybody had some huge uh, you know issues to talk about of the of the product after doing all that study you also need to study what's happening with products around the world so we studied the international products in fact, Gilbarco, the first one, what you see, was actually in collaboration with LNT and they had supplied the meters to LNT. Later on, we, we, we you know, stopped the collaboration. So Gilbarco, one of the leaders in petrol pump, you know, was designing petrol pumps like that. And they had these sort of, you know, nozzle boots, which are multi-hose. And then you had these, you know, large uh, multi-hose pumps. And we realized that this is not, our Indian market is not ready for these type of pumps. Then we studied further. What's happening with multi-hose pumps, the large footprints, 
There are different types of fuels. In that time, in 1988, there was only one type of fuel in the country, diesel and petrol. That's all. There were no, you know, like uh, premium diesel or premium petrol. So we needed only one, one, one nozzle. And look at the differential between the pumps in the U.S. and the pumps in the uh, uh, pumps in Japan. In Japan, again, very small footprint, single high quality fuel. So we see that every context demands different type of product. So that was one, you know, very important lesson we got from our uh, study. Then we studied a local market which put LNT out of business. The first product is uh, the, you know, uh, mid, uh, this called Excel flow meters. I think they had a nice display on the top, floating on a pipe column, and it was like, you know, very different from the boxy look of Larsen Tubro pumps. And then there was a Midco pump which had, you know, electronic display in the middle, and this also was, you know, beating LNT out of the market. These two products we studied in detail and found out what are good about it, what is bad about it, how they are, you know, uh, able to, you know sort of small companies, how they are able to, you know, completely offset uh, a large company like Larsen Tubro. And this was the mechanical pump of Larsen Tubro, where, you know, uh, we were have selling mechanical pumps, uh, again, well designed, excellent, you know, uh, user interface, but the electronics pump, they didn't design. What they did was, they put an electronic box on top of the same box. You see this whole box, they put in a box, a, a small box on top of the same pump. And then, you know, it didn't work because people could never relate to a new product because electronic products are new, right? They're completely new technology and you put it on top of an old box, people will not, uh, you know, even identify it as a new, new pump. So they fail miserably in the market. So that's where, you know, I came in and we started working out, again studied some more international pumps across the globe um, and then saw what are the, you know, key development uh, aspects. And uh, remember, they were giving us this, you know, specification of looking at only very focused on style and new trends because they wanted the pumps to look very different and very, you know, like uh, trendy. So we just at that time we checked what are the, you know, car styles going on. We found out they are sleek, smooth, angular. These are the terms we got from our style trends. We also looked at, you know, uh, dynamism as a focus at that time. These are all, you know, uh, essence of uh, design. And then we started our idea sketching. Uh, in fact, this is a sketch done by Peer Satik where, you know, he looked at various, uh, you know, uh, ideas of how the pump can be more, uh, uh, more innovative. And then we, then I, uh, when I came in, I said, let me look at the pumps in a completely new way. Can the pumps be like totem poles, like signatures, because people are coming to come and stop there, right? <coughs> so what type of design, you know, we can do by taking inspiration from totem poles? So in this design, you see the central column is lighted. So it's a very, you know, a new design when compared to earlier designs. Then we looked at the concept generation phase where we took inspiration from a balanced form, which is a signage on two poles, uh, a balance, which is a regular balance. So let us come up with a balanced design. So this analogy we used and we created one more rendering. Then we also looked at lot of small scale models. In fact, we had some 20, 30 sketches. I'm not showing you all because of positive time. We made a lot of sketches. I'm just showing you the sketches which we took forward. So out of two sketches, we took forward to make multiple uh, scale models. So you can see the scale model. This is a small scale pump model of this size. So when we made these models, we realized that this model was not very unique or very different from other existing products. So like, you know, we were uh, analyzing this model was unique because it was like having a sloping column and there much more variety. And to the, uh, to the everlasting credit of using scale models and playing with models, this whole story of coming up with the Z line came up because of play with this particular model. It was a small model in the hand. We we're trying to see how the sloping column can work better. And we said, why to have the pipe? You see that vertical pipe? So we removed the pipe, which takes the you know, signals from the bottom to the top and the electronic signals as well as the uh, electrical wires. And we removed that pipe and became phenomenally clean, sleek, as well as, you know, like uh, less clutter. So this is the predecessor which was not there in the sketch form. So only when we started making models, so I always keep telling my students that when you start making physical models, scale models, your creativity grows at least four to five times. So here we have this, you know, uh, uh, pump, which is at the plaster scale, small scale. And then we made a big presentation to the management. The management said, I, you know, we don't want to risk this completely novel out of the box idea, but we'll make a prototype of this as well as the prototype of the pie. You saw the pie design. So those two prototypes we'll make. But I said before prototype, I like to make a mock-up model. 
What's a mock-up model? Thermocol, which doesn't work, it's just made out of thermocol. So this is a mock-up model made out of cardboard and thermocol. And when we went for a meeting here, what's the advantage of making these models? You get a lot of inputs from across your, across your company. From the manufacturing people, they came and told us what's difficult in manufacturing. The, uh, the marketing people came and told us what is good or bad about the you know, features which they think was important. The people from the maintenance came and said, oh wow, this is very you know, good to maintain, but you see to it that the box comes off very easily. So everybody can relate to a mock-up model very early in the design phase. So you can make quick changes and make it much better for implementation. So the, these are the first mock-up model and then we made out of the mock-up models, we you know uh, made at least seven mock-up models, three mock-up models, sorry, and we created two prototypes. You remember the pie shape, the pie which was the balanced form, and we had the the Z-line form. So there was these two forms again in big companies like Larson and Tubro. There's something called the product development meetings. In the product development meetings, a very very tough meeting where every department comes for the meeting. And at this stage, it went to that particular meeting where we had head of manufacturing, head of product planning, head of finance, head of uh, 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 maintenance, head of uh, marketing. So all these people will come and they will look, each one will look at his point. What will the finance guy look at? He will say how much investment I need to make in making these two products come true. Investment from point of your tooling, investment from point of your buying new machines, investment from point of your development. What will manufacturing guy say? Oh, will my existing manufacturing machines take care of all the components? We gave him a brief that the manufacturing, you should not change some of the synergy. So we kept 90% manufacturing same, but we had 10% improvements because we thought that you can't have innovation coming in. Remember the sunflower model? At every level you need to innovate. So the major things we kept constant, but we you know innovated on some very key components to come up with a great level of innovation. So how many of you will choose the first or the second? Within the company, it was very interesting that there were 70 to 80 percent people who chose the pie design. Why would they do that? Tell me. Stable. Yeah? Stable it's stable. Very good. What else? Safe. Safe. Very good. What else? People are used to that kind of. People are used to. Perception is very, very strong. Remember my letterbox example? How I failed miserably when I, you know, negated the perception. So then, uh, what else? Very true, easy to install, easy to, you know, there's no, you know, uh, headache at all. But, but if LNT is talking itself as imagineering, to the everlasting credit of, you know, Mr. Devinder Nath, who used to teach at IDC, he used to come, he was the head of uh, R&D there and he was my boss. He said, he's, in that meeting, he challenged the manufacturing and challenged the people in the maintenance and said, is it possible for you to take up this challenge of, creating an, uh, an out of the box idea and taking it to the market. When you give a challenge to people, what will they say? Very accomplished engineers and accomplished people in the company, they took up the challenge, they said, yes, we will do it. Because they like, had all the strengths, they had all the best machines in the world to produce a pump, which was very different from any pump which can be manufactured very easily by local manufacturers, right? This could be done by local manufacturers, whereas Z-Line needed very, very high-end CNC machines, very, very high quality, uh, quality control of dimensional control of the assemblies because just imagine if the sloping column becomes at an angle, it looks very shabby, leave alone making it look out of the box and you know, uh, neat. So we put both these pumps in our own, we have in LNT, we have a large uh, you know, uh, petrol station ourselves, so we installed both of them over there for study purposes and we checked what is happening, they are all working prototypes, so we reached the working prototype level. So remember, we have, caused, we have nearly crossed the second value of death. Working prototype we reach. What's the advantage of Larson Tubra as I told you? After your first mock-up, you get the complete strength of the company to smoothly sail to the next stages. So that's the beauty of uh, this design. And this is the final you know, selected concept. And you know, that's me, if you can see me. In 1988, I think I was around uh, 26 years old at that time. And then uh, these were the features of the Z-Line pump at the concept level. It created a completely new image. Everybody was very happy within the company. The sloping column, remember in form and aesthetics, what was my brief? My brief was to design a new look petrol pump. And all the pumps were boxy. To create a new look, we had to come up with a dynamic shape. 
so we came up with the sloping column and that gave a dynamic shape in fact i remember my first class in uh, my uh, school uh, in the uh, in idc where my professor said if the line is standing straight it is very very stable you know if it is at an angle it is dynamic at the line level so we clearly knew that you need to have lines which are sloping to have a dynamic look so you know starting from basic elements of design to going to the final product it's very valuable for us to understand all these things and then you need to and electronic product remember electronic product had to have a new it's a new animal right a mechanical product is a mechanical product electronic product is electronic product so your whole you know design has to be very different so how can you show high tech look in a product so we took you know cues from tvs and radios and all and we said we need to have a display which is very very prominent and which is good so we have that display which came up that's called the high tech look of the palm because the display and when the display glows in the night it makes it look very high tech and then you know in <coughs> when there are array of pumps in the pub station it they look very very beautiful because there are different different shapes and you know because of the sloping columns they all look very very synchronized and you know good so the company was very very happy and then what happens at this stage the company invests a lot of money on taking it to pilot production till now the investment can you tell me how much if this 100 rupees the total product development cost to mass manufacturing how much would be spent in the first phase <coughs> till this stage out of 100 rupees say any guess somebody says 70 that's wrong <coughs> seriously wrong 20 20 to 25 very little money is spent till this day that's why until here if you can have a collaborative teaming and good meetings you can save a lot of money in the future so from 20 when you go to pilot production how much will be the cost you would have reached around another 20 40 50 percent of the cost would have come to pilot production and from pilot to mass your maximum cost comes in and you can't go back so remember when you have to be when you have to recall faulty products you know car industry millions of cars have to come back so if there's a mistake your your sort of losses are huge and your investments also are huge so that's the you know serious matter so you need to understand that you know in the design process if you make if you can be very very sure very early in your process you'll be saving a lot of money for the company so here we are we had uh, got a lot of interesting details so we uh, the 10 percent of manufacturing in fact i must talk about a very important aspect over here about the country's level of capability of vendors that was the time when the maruti udyog came up with the small car maruti 800 all of you remember that small short car maruti 800 you see some on the roads so that was launched during that year in 89 what happened when they launched maruti uh, that small car they brought in lot of technologies from japan vendors from you know different locations and vendor did collaboration with japan and came up with beautiful components like rubber gaskets which are long lasting you know rubber gaskets are used in cars they're made of special polymers i said i need to use contemporary materials remember my formula contemporary technology contemporary materials nothing new so i had to go and use those things which have come into the market so here you can see how we used the you know windscreen you know gasket of maruti redesigned the complete thing was redesigned redesigned windscreen gasket from the same company which is manufacturing for larsen and tubro and and sort of implemented and we saved huge amount of cost because of that multiple levels of cost came down we put the display panel on it we fit the glass on it so what is the big advantage we got by putting a glass onto this rubber gasket the biggest advantage was the glass never broke <coughs> Whereas in earlier pumps, the glass was fitted by a bolt. So what happens when you fit a glass by bolt and a panel? When you drop it or when it's in transit, the glass can crack, right? Because there's too much load on the glass. When it's in a rubber gasket, like cars, there's no breakage. So that was a very big advantage over here. And we also saved a lot of money in assembly. One quick assembly, you could fit the glass onto the rubber. Then we also came up with this modular assembly. The hydraulics was assembled separately in the hydraulics division of Larsen and Tubro. And the electronics was assembled in earlier pump, it was together. It was so difficult because electronics needs different type of equipment, different type of clean rooms, different type of systems. Whereas hydraulics needs, you know, the different tanks and you, you have a lot of, you know, uh, uh, what do you call, a lot of testing happening with the fuel before you put on. So it's quite messy over there. So we did modular design very early. So you could, you know, get very good sort of uh, details over there. 
and then uh, we got uh, pilot production order from one one product from each company the Bharat Petroleum, the uh, IBP, the Indian Oil and then the uh, Hindustan Petroleum. All of them gave one one order saying that for pilot production we will give you only one order. One piece is very difficult to manufacture but LNT being LNT they said we will you know spend all the money. If you make for example if the product cost is say 1 lakh rupees if you have to produce one piece how much will it cost? 10 lakh rupees. Are you following me? That is the issue of mass production because you are just making one, you are stopping your machine, you are changing the tools, you are changing your dice, you are just for one, 10 times the cost is the norm. So we spent 10 times the cost because we had to make inroads into the market and we did all that and this is the uh, factory where we visited to get the rubber gaskets from Maruti. Uh, the, it's a vendor in uh, Daman who was manufacturing these gaskets. We designed the gaskets to our need, manufactured those gaskets and these are the boxes, the top boxes which are very intricately done and just imagine if you open this up in development, it will look like a flying bird, the sheet before you fold it and that was supposed to be very, very accurately punched. So LNT had this large CNC turret punching uh, machines, their accuracy was 0 0.01 millimeter. So all our products went on to these machines which could give very, very accurate development, very accurate sheets. So what happens when you fold them, you get very, very good correct sort of you know uh, uh, high quality product. And then we had you know uh, 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 convenience for the station, the secondary users. In fact, earlier you know what used to happen, the station, the petrol pump owners had to come to the pump, open the panel put a torch and read this display which is to be read in the morning and in the evening. This is his display. How much petrol was sold during the day in his shift? But we said our, our secondary users also are important. So what we did, we moved it up and we had a nice display for him. So he can just come to the pump and read in the morning and go. So user convenience for every user is very critical. So here, you know, we moved the display up the small, you know, uh, mechanical display. Then we made it very, very convenient for our uh, secondary users, the maintenance people. In fact, I remember earlier when I was doing survey, I found out that people were actually, you know, like uh, when they were uh, opening the boxes and the petrol pumps, they would spill everywhere around and there would be a traffic jam at the back. People would be waiting in queues because it took so much time to open the screws, remove the cards, uh, uh, take out the panels and put aside. Here we just used you know creative ideation from car industry, lift the bonnet, so we lifted the bonnet and we fitted the cards like a computer industry. What do computer industry does? They put them cards in slots, so we designed slots, no rocket science, just borrowing technologies from here and there and materials from here and there. We put the cards in slots, so the maintenance, if the card gets out of order, you can replace it in 15 minutes flat, early it used to take 3 hours. So just imagine the amount of loss to the company station owner if he can't operate a pump for three hours. So this became a very, very you know uh, important feature in the pump, easy maintenance, easy you know. And look at the view. When you open the bonnet, you get 360, not 360, 270 degrees view from all three sides. Earlier design, you know, when there were boxes, you take on one panel, you get only one side access. Here you took out the whole box. So you get all sides access and it's a, it's a you know really a happy situation for the maintenance guys and because it opens you also get complete view and complete light from all sides. And then we used large thermoforming machines for doing all those panels, the lighted panels. I'll show you the lighted panels a little bit uh, at the back. And then these are the card slots I was talking about, remember? The, the cards went into slots and you know earlier we put all these connectors here so that you can easily plug the connector out, plug the display card out. I'll talk about this LCD and LED display. Huh? Can you guess what this LCD and LED is doing? Any of you can guess? You have seen some old pumps, any of you? We will come down to that later. What is this? In electronics engineers here, this is a power supply and this is the motherboard in the middle. Motherboard is in the middle section and these are the two displays on either side and either side display is the same display. There is no change in the display. <coughs> then we had some excellent painting systems in Larsen and Tubro which were inline painting. We used to have automatic painting lines, so very good you know uh, painting lines were there. We had great manpower as I told you, very, very skilled manpower for machine parts and pumps and motors and all were phenomenally done. 
and then we were very very happy that we could came, come up with our first pilot production this is you can even see the pellet here when it goes into mass manufacture in pilot production the product goes through a cycle of uh, you know uh, on the pellet bolted together and this is you know now coming out of the uh, pilot production from the factory floor and then what are the other things so now after the pilot production we installed all of them all the five in five different locations in Bombay and all the company owner companies executives went and saw them and they were all very very happy especially because it had a new look it had a lot of these interesting features and they were pretty convinced so as soon as uh, uh, out of the five companies one company is generally very very agile which is Bharat Petroleum they immediately placed an order again a pilot order but large order of around 200 petrol pumps they said please supply 200 to us as soon as possible because they want to make a little you know they want to go ahead of the other companies and install these pumps so we got that order but then what happens within the company in in lnt if you see you'd use large cnc manufacturing processes you need to scale up for production to for scaling up for production you have to invest on new tooling new machines wherever needed we did that then we also had to ramp up CNC milling for meters. You know, all the petrol pumps have meters inside. You can see the meter a little bit over here in the back. Uh, the meter, the meters are here. So you need to, you know, manufacture those in in house. So you need to ramp up the production for the meters. We did that, and you know, this picture shows you a very interesting, uh, you know, picture. What do you think this is? All all pump is open. It's in a lab. What do you think they're doing over here in the LNT uh, product development division? It is called endurance test. They are actually putting the nozzle in a tank at the back and measuring all the parameters of electrical, hydraulics and sensors continuously. That is, you pump and you suck from the same tank. So the cycle went on for one year before my mass production could go into field. And we could plug in all the problems during that endurance test. So endurance test is very important when you don't want to have any failure in the field. But still we had a failure, I'll tell you about the story a little later, a small failure somewhere, I'll tell you that later. But this endurance test, you know, we had some problems with our links, links were breaking, we changed those, we had some problems with the belts, those were replaced with better quality belts, we had problems with some of the seals, oil seals inside, they were replaced. So, you know, this endurance test is done over a period of one year, constantly you run three to four pumps to get the endurance done. And then the biggest advantage for Larsen and Tubro was that we had a company which manufactured our own electronics which is very very high end defense electronics. What happens in petrol pumps tell me, in India do you think there are canopies for all petrol pumps? The sheds? No, they are all in the open. So what do you think is the temperature inside the box? Any guess quickly? Inside the box in the sun in the afternoon? Huh? 60, no, 60 is too less. It's greenhouse. It's all closed. You get a lot of sun there. You got a metal surface. It gets 80 to 90 degrees. So, will electronics work? Normal electronics work? No. So, we had to use military grade electronics. So, military grade electronics have capacity to 80 to 90 degrees or all components. And in case the temperature goes up more than that, what will that do? There's a cutoff. So, it will stop, it will not work, but it will not burn off. So, we have to use military grade electronics and that was the biggest strength. So, in, when I talked about the innovation flower, it is not just because of my shape and my, you know, like user interface that my uh, product was innovative. No, that petal manufacturing technology, that every petal had phenomenal amount of in-depth understanding because I am doing design, uh, innovation by design, showing only the design story. But I need to tell you about the other aspects which are very critical and this electronic development was phenomenal. The, the type of development our uh, the engineers did in our uh, division, electronics division was very good and this particular, you know, like uh, uh, electronic carts were very robust and you know, very little failure uh, in the field. And then we had large scale deployment, like as soon as Bharat Petroleum sort of gave an order, we put up these pumps all over, you know, uh, all over the country. So what are the key, you know, points? You can clearly see that we use very little sheet metal, right? The shape itself demanded, we use 40% less sheet metal than the earlier box. You saw the earlier box? And this sheet metal, when it goes into a CNC machine, was imported at that time from Japan. So the cost saving was phenomenal. Then we had exclusive tenders from government because the shape was unique, 
the tender set Z line type of pump. So there was no chance for anybody else to supply. Then we had you know a very convenient user display panel which was wide angled. So what happens when the display is wide angle? You can see from large angles. The angle of vision is larger. And the innovative shape made the pump look inviting. And I'll you know come to some more interesting points a little later. And there's some interesting features happening in the local market. In fact, the international market was pretty surprised to see an LCD and LED display doing the same job. So we had a single display with LED and LCD displays. We also had multiple displays that is one display for rupees running in rupees and another display for running in liters. I will show you that too. So why was this needed? Because we were not using the high end computer uh, controlled uh, chips as of today, but we had you know uh, uh, at least better programming uh, chips at that time. So we had very good chips which could actually run your pump on both. So we used to have a button there, say that if you want to buy for rupees 100, you could actually you know rather than buying in liters, you could buy for 100. That was the first time LNT introduced it. Now it's very common practice, but at that time it was very new. So we had a two display system and then we also had a three display where you have the rupees the liters and the rate of petrol coming in. I will just show you these slides to explain this. Look at this problem of day and night. So in this pump you have the liters and the rupees running parallelly and then you have an LED display in the bottom. Why is this so unique for our country? Because we do not have canopies and in the sunlight your LED displays are not visible at all. What is visible? The liquid crystal display. So the top ones are liquid crystal displays, so only you can see those displays in the sun and in the evening the LCD when you do not have too many light because you do not have a canopy and lights. So when you do not have light what you need? You need light emitting displays. So you have LEDs for the night. So this is very unique and you know like international markets were pretty shocked and foxed. They said oh they, we cannot supply because they did not have these pumps. They did not have these multiple displays. So this was done and you know this was uh, became very popular and then I told you about the multiple three display liters, rupees and and rate of petrol display. So all of them on the same microcontroller, only the display cards were changed. So there is a lot of, you know, whenever you design a product, you need to have multiple variants. So the costs were higher, of course, but there was a chance for the oil companies to have differentiation in the cities and in the rural areas or whatever they want to do so that they can have much better uh, systems in place. And then what we were very, very happy that within, within two years, LNT went into leadership position, the competition was wiped out. There was phenomenal cost to feature design, became the largest selling pump and what was surprising was that the customers demanded for Z-Line pump from the oil companies. They said we want only Z-Line. And then the biggest satisfaction came when I was in the company and I read this you know uh, Bharat Petroleum uh, internal magazine and uh, the customers thought they got better petrol and better quantity, correct quantity of petrol from the Z-Line. So that is the perception they got. So now just imagine. A shape can be related to perception, right? So whenever they went to a Z-line petrol pump, they got better. They, they got better petrol and better measure. And they did get better measure, of course, because we, we did a lot of technology inside. We had you know special technologies to prevent cheating. We had special technology. Remember, I, I spent a lot of time in the stations. I didn't know how they cheat, how they cheated, and what they did. I will give you one example. What they did in the companies was, in the stations, they would trigger the nozzle two three times. And when they trigger the nozzle two three times, there is a sensor inside which, which is an optical proximity sensor. This starts vibrating, right? So this instead of reading 10 ml, it will read two times 10 ml. So what we did, we put a unidirectional bearing. So any amount of trigger, then it will not go back, it will only go forward. So we did a lot of those, you know, small improvements as I told you like from the innovation model and finally the pump you know like uh, and then because the shape was new the product was new people also thought they got better quality petrol and that was a you know great satisfaction for us in the company. And then you know as you, you know rightly we discussed the unique shape you know gave it leadership position and you know much better maintenance access from the top and from the side. In fact the sensors are located over here the proximity sensors so when you open this box out even you have very good access to sensors and maintenance and the shape you know uh, 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 within, within three years when we went to school for a survey and we asked children to draw petrol pumps, the children were drawing the Z line. So that becomes a very important aspect of semantic change. So people registered that you know as the you know major shape because it is a unique shape. Now, now compare this with the letterbox story, in letterbox we could not do it. 
because Larsen Tube was a large company. They did a lot of advertisement. They did a lot of promotion. Their companies were captive. We could do this shape change in Larsen Tube, but for Letterbox, when I did the shape change, we fell down. So we had to really do a marry between the old and the new. So we need to understand where we can do a complete radical change, where we have to understand the perceptions of people and work on it. So this was a very important journey for us. So we then we, you know, using the uh, idea of the petrol pump, then I joined uh, uh, IIT Delhi as a faculty. And after I joined as a faculty, they said, you please do research. So I studied all my, you know, uh, cases, came up with new innovations in different sectors and came up with a collaborative model. <coughs> What's the collaborative model? I think we discussed this earlier. So the core team, we need to understand the cross-functional team where we need to talk to all our other departments like manufacturing, finance, like materials and process. And then we have the third team which was the external vendors, you know, external support, external material suppliers, external, you know, uh, maintenance people. So you, uh, you, you use these teaming. So when you do the collaborative teaming, you are, you know, surely bound to be successful and come up with innovative products in the market. And then, you know, uh, uh, by using, you know, these things, the pumps, you know, everywhere we could see scales and scales of pump coming up, the displays were easy, they were, you know, demand for more and more, all new stations would, you know, uh, put up our pump and, you know, like uh, it's now installed all over the country and, you know, uh, uh, it is like nearly 1,700 pumps. Uh, uh, displayed, but now it's out of market, and we will, you know, understand how uh, you know uh, uh, we uh, close this. I think the product it went out of production in 2001. We gave five years life, so LNT kept selling till uh, till uh, ten years, ten to eleven years. They kept on, you know, selling because when the pro pop, uh, product is popular, they don't actually take it out of the market. So that became a very very uh, sort of uh, successful, and the company also turnover grew nearly four to five times in the petrol pump sector itself. And it was a real, uh, you know, uh, case study on innovation where the customer accepted it finally, and that's why we call it innovation. And there were large-scale deployment across the uh, across the country. And on top of it, very critical aspect was that we had the users basically, you know, uh, at multiple levels were satisfied. The primary user, the tertiary user, and the secondary users, all of them were having something in the pump which was valuable for them. In fact, I must tell you when we did the packaging for this box, we packaged it also in the shape of a human body. So the pump would never go upside down and never have any breakages. So we did even for the packing and transportation guys, we designed the pump in such a way and the packing such a way that it was very convenient for transit as well as nobody will keep the pump uh, upside down because the top was narrow and the bottom was wide. So every, every point was considered and taken forward. Okay, you have any uh, questions you like to take here? Because after this, we'll go to the next case, we, you know, uh, where we uh, took up the seal innovation. And after I joined, like, as I told you, I joined IIT Delhi and, you know, did my PhD, came up with collaborative innovation. And then we took up the next level of petrol pump, same segment and took it forward. So we'll take that case study in the next class. Okay.